Good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm actually doing this today. I'm just rejoicing right now. I'm getting some of my voice back. And I wanted to share this Christmas Eve day with you sort of in person. And I'm really praying that what I'm about to share with you guys will touch your heart today and will lead you to the real reason why we celebrate this day, this holiday, that it's not a simple holiday, it's Christmas. I was reading something very special. I mean, everything out of God's Word to me is special. But I was reading out of Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, and I challenge you guys to read this passage. This is a very poignant messianic promise, and one of my favorite the main verse out of this for today's devotions, but I'm going to read all of this to you. It's Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously affect her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light sh hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. The joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian, for every battle of the warrior is with the conf is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I was reminded of a few things as I read this, some things that God happened to show me over the last couple of days especially things that I've been reading from uh, his word, uh, things that I've been blessed with uh, through minute, the ministry, especially of Pastor Greg. Um, one of which is something I want to share with all of you, and I hope I can find it. But he speaks about this. He speaks about this particular passage of scripture, and he said something very powerful that I, I really wanted to share with you guys. And I hope and pray that it gets you as, as it did me. Because he talked about how I want to make sure I word this right. He talked about how this was more that, that this was not just a, a simple divine birth announcement, but something that you don't want to miss. That this is Christ the Lord that came, that came to us in the flesh. And one of the things that he also mentioned in this is that the one part of this particular passage in verse 7, this is something that hasn't been fulfilled yet, but it's going to be that one day that 
very soon. Very, very, very soon. This chat passage, Isaiah 9, verse 7, is going to be fulfilled. The child's been born. And I'm going to read this. This was a couple days this was a couple days ago from one of Greg's devotionals. He says, as we look at our world today, we realize that part of the promise of Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7 has not yet been fulfilled. The son has been given, the child has been born, but he has not yet taken the government upon his shoulders. We do not yet have peace with judgment and justice, but the good news is that there will come a day when Christ will return. He will establish his kingdom on this earth and it will be the righteous rule of God himself. I was reminded of, of this statement as I read this devotional this morning that this this passage there's a second part to it and that second part is coming very soon. You see everything going on around us and I'm not trying to make any massive predictions. I'm not trying to be a prophetess. But I'm telling you, Scripture states that this is going to happen. And I look forward to that day. Part of this, people, the biggest thing is what we celebrate is the fact that when Jesus came into this world, before he could take the government upon his shoulder, he took something else on his shoulder, and that was the cross. Before he could wear the crown of glory as king of kings and lord of lords, he had to wear a shameful crown of thorns and give his life as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And the next, when that star marked his arrival the first time, the next time around, the heavens are going to roll back like a scroll and all the stars are going to fall from the sky. And he's going to, himself is going to light the sky. That's coming. We don't know when, but it is going to happen. And I'm here to be his representative, to share the truth with you. And I want to share something else that God burdened my heart. There was a song uh, I heard uh, by a Christian musician uh, named Sandy Patty. She did a a song with a, another group called Second Chapter of Acts. And it's called Unto Us, and it's based on Isaiah 9, Isaiah chapter 9. And there's a, a, pat, a, a, a phrase out of, the, of that song that says this, People who walk in the darkness are going to behold a great light. Those in the land of the shadow will all say goodbye to the night. That happened, people, when Christ came into this world. Unto us a son is born. Unto us a son is given. We were given that. And today is the evening of his birth. The evening before, you know, Christmas Eve. And as we begin to celebrate this special day, the day of Christ's birth, I challenge you all to think of what this day really means. To think about the fact that this was the moment as Reverend Niemöller stated, My dear friends, on this Christmas, let us seek in the babe of Bethlehem, the one who came to us in order to bear with us everything that weighs heavily upon us. God himself has built a bridge from himself to us. A dawn from on high has visited us. And he also went to say, while he was in Dachau prison, suffering for his faith because he openly spoke against Hitler. Out of the brilliance that surrounded the shepherds, a shining ray will fall into our darkness. And I'm here to state to those that Maybe you're approaching this holiday season missing a loved one or going through something that you wouldn't wish on anybody. I'm here to tell you that there is someone who cares about you 
someone who understands what you're going through, that wants to help you, that loves you so much that he came into the world as a human infant to bridge that gap between us and the Heavenly Father, to redeem us. Christ came to this earth. He came to be near you, to you, so you can come near to him to give your life purpose and meaning, to forgive you of your sins, and to give you the best gift of all, eternal life, and the hope of heaven beyond the grave. That's what Christmas is about. It's not about things, tinsel, Christmas trees, this, that, or the other. It's not about gifts under the tree or, or anything, but it's really about the gift that was given on the tree when Christ died there for us. And I challenge you today, I urge you today with whatever you're doing, that if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, please make that decision to do that. Come to know the real reason for this season and open your heart and life to the one who can give you the greatest gift of all, and that is salvation in Jesus Christ. I'm here inviting you all to experience that same joy, that same peace, and more so by making that decision to accept Christ as your Savior today. I have a link here posted on how you can do that. And I pray that you do that today. We're all sinners. We're all born in sin. We're lost in sin. And God stated that a price had to be paid. And God the Son, Jesus himself, stepped in and said, I'll take care of it. He suffered and died on a rugged, nasty cross for our sins, for you, for me, for the entire world. And three days later, he rose again, proving that he has power over sin, death, Satan, and most of all, that he's the Son of God. And he's waiting at the door of your heart, asking to be let in. And I'm urging you today to call on his name. Make this a Christmas you'll never forget, a Christmas to rejoice in. And I also want to lift up those of you, too, who are just suffering around this time of year. I know maybe you've lost somebody you care about. Maybe you're going through a financial difficulty or something emotional. I just urge you to turn to the one who heals broken hearts and let him heal yours. You guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful Christmas Eve. And a merry, merry, merry Christmas. I've got to get going. But I wish you all a wonderful day and a wonderful evening in the Lord. Bye for now and Merry Christmas.